Hey Whiskey Tube, welcome to F&G Whiskey. We've got a little bit different show for you today. Um, today we're going to tell you bourbons that I kind of wish I would have passed on. Um, hunting is already competitive as it can be here in Colorado, but what I've kind of found is that sometimes when you are deer in the headlights with a bottle that you want, you kind of just pull the trigger and hope for the best. And unfortunately on some of these, they, they just didn't live up to what I was hoping for. Um, first bottle we're gonna come in with is Smoke Wagon Uncut the Younger. Now the regular uncut offering is just, it's, it's a great product. Like great flavors, um, good rice spice, no youth at all. This one has youth. Um, what I kind of categorize youth is something is that burnt peanut, peanut brittle. Um, something that just does not hit well with my palate. I have a real tough time with drinking younger whiskeys, um, especially some um, smaller distilleries out there. It just really hits me wrong and it's something I can't get past. So although I've almost killed this bottle, I will say it's usually like the last pour of my night um, and I just fight to get past it. Now I will say after a few pours, it got less, the, the youthfulness definitely pivoted out a little bit, but for how bad and how hard I hunted for this, it really was discouraging. Now, a $55 uncut bourbon, that, that's a good deal. Um, I just won't buy this one again. Next on the list, Good Times. This is a finished rye, it's a barrel strength rye whiskey that is finished in, where did it go? I wanna say it's apple brandy. No, I'm not seeing it anywhere on here. Oh, finished in toasted white oak and peach brandy barrels. This one's coming in at 113 proof. Uh, barrel 169, bottle 187. The flavors in this are amazing. Um, it's a hundred dollar bottle. So I want to be able to sit on this, sip, pull out flavors, enjoy. And there is a very chemical type note in this that dominates. Now water tones it down a little bit, but still for a hundred dollars, I shouldn't be getting this manufactured taste. And it really was a disappoint, disappointment. Um, not gonna say the store that selected it, but the guy was pretty high on it. They had two different ones and I was very specific in like which one was better. And they claimed that this one was, um, and it, it was definitely a miss for me. Our next bottle is coming in. This is a bourbon enthusiast pick, I believe. No, breaking bourbon, sorry. This is a breaking bourbon pick. Um, it's a three chord. Toasted barrel coming in at 54.25, so 108 proof. And I'll tell you, I, I paid 90 for this. I bought it online and it just did not deliver. It's It has like two very strong notes. And it's funny because I believe it says that it's blended with like a, yeah, 16 year old is 50%, a five year old and a five, five year old Kentucky bourbon and a five year old Indiana high rye. And I get youth, so much youth on this, that burnt peanut brittle, I don't know if it's toasted, just not you know, making it come out more, but I thought with a 16 year old bourbon that this thing was gonna be amazing and gonna be a hitter. And I, I'm trying to figure out ways to blend it and, and try other things to make it better. Um, but yeah, definitely something that just didn't hit the, hit the palate very well. Next, we're coming in at Old Scout. This is a six-year-old bourbon. Um, I was very disappointed in this one just because I had gotten a Total Wine version and it was a drain pour. I'm talking so much youth. And, and you're gonna hear that a lot on these reviews. Like, youth just hits me wrong. I can't do it. Um, just doesn't work well with my palate. This one's not as bad. I will say for a $45 bottle, this one was 10 times better than the Total Line version. I just probably will stay away from Old Scout until maybe they get in that seven or eight range because I'm still getting youth on a six-year-old bourbon and it's 
it's very predominant in the flavors. So $45 bottle, when I buy it again, maybe if it was a little older, maybe I'd give it another shot. Maybe if I, I really like the store. That's why I got this one is because the store manager, he told me he, he gets a little youth on it. He was very upfront, but he's like, Total Wine usually just gets their bottles sent to them versus we actually try ours. So I gave it a shot. Um, just not something that I'm really enjoying. Next on the list, this is the bourbon enthusiast pick. This is a Nulu toasted barrel and very one dimensional. Um, I think you get, you get like a, the heavy oak that you get on a toasted barrel. And then you also get um, the strong marshmallow, but there's also some chemical thing in there. A little bit of youth on the back end and the, the rice spice because this is MGP or whatever they're called, Ross and Squibb now, um, MG, MG, MGP sourced. So you get a little bit of that rice spice on the finish, but um, I've just heard amazing things from Nulu and this was my first one and it's gonna take me a while to buy another one. Um, I'm sure I'll, I'll cave in at some point and get another one. I kicked myself because I didn't get the honey one and a lot of people raved about that one. But yeah, I just didn't really work for me. Next on the list, Booker's. Now, I usually love Booker's. Um, I don't think I've had really a bad per se bottle. I've seen some reviews where people kind of crap on Booker's and some people like Booker's. Me personally, I like it. This one is the Ronnie's Batch and it's just very one dimensional. I get barrel spice and that's it. Nothing else. Like, and I've tried to go back to this. As you can see, I put a, a decent dent in it and it was the worst Booker's that I've ever had. So if you can get away from not getting Ronnie's Batch, I would highly recommend it. This one is uh, comes in at 124 or yeah 124.3 proof. It was aged six years and 11 months and 22 days. I just didn't like it. Didn't like it at all. When you're paying hundred dollars, which in Colorado to get to even find Booker's is hard, but you're usually paying hundred bucks. I don't know one store that gets every batch. It, it, I don't know why we you know don't get distributed more. But it seems like Jim Bean products just don't come here very often or as cons consistently as we'd like. But if you see the Ronnie's batch and you see another batch up there, I would, I would recommend getting the other batch. This one just did not do it for me. Oh, next, Old Elk Double Wheat. I wanted to love this bottle. There was reviews saying how great it was. And again, it's the almighty youth movement. On the front of the palette, this thing shines. It's got great flavor. But then just in that back end, mid to back end of the palette, I get youth. And it's why I try to stay away from the smaller distilleries. It just doesn't agree with me. There's probably Old Elk fans that love this bottle. I just can't get past that finish on the end, that back of the palette youth note of what I consider burnt peanut brittle. So, yeah, Old Elk, Double Oaked. I was disappointed because this was a hundred dollar bottle too. So it's one of those ones where when I have some friends over that maybe aren't as, as you know, known to whiskey, then maybe I'll pull it out and let them have a pour and see what they think. Last on the list. I hate to do this, but I did a review on this bottle. Michter's toasted barrel finish the sour mash come in at 86 proof. $100 bottle. I searched high and low for this bottle and it's meh. It's, you know, I, I'm, I kind of kicked myself. I tried it at a bar and, but I tried it with some really, really good whiskeys. So I was like, ah, I'll give it a second chance. And I just love Michter stuff. I wasn't a huge fan of the toasted bourbon, but the barrel strength rye, the, the barrel strength toasted rye, I absolutely love those. Those are some of my favorite bottles I've ever had. Now this one just, it just lacks. It's, it just, I don't know. I, I and I get that same chemical note that I kind of get on the, uh, the good times just wasn't a great pour for me. And I think the biggest disappointment was how hard I looked for it. 
think I mentioned on the review, they did a drop here in Colorado and I was, I was out visiting a friend. So I totally missed out on the drop and was super mad, thought I was, wasn't gonna get it. And cause usually when it hits Colorado, it just hits and you never see it again. But luckily my uh, regular store got a couple bottles a few, you know, a few weeks later. And so I was able to get it. But this is another one where um, maybe if a guy brings his wife over, I'll let her try it out since it's so low proof see what they think. I, I can already think of one of my friends that really liked uh, Elijah Craig Toasted, so maybe I'll do that. But what do you guys do? What do you do when you get a bottle you don't like? Um, do you force your way through it? Do you mix it with other things? Tell me in the comments. Tell me something that you like to do with bourbons that you're not a fan of. Um, I had a clearing out series one time where I just cleared out a bunch of bottles that I didn't like and I gave it to some people that were new to bourbon. Um, a lot of money out of my pocket, but you know, they seem pretty happy and I, I would definitely do it again. Um, but yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, here at F&G Whiskey, it's all about building a community. This is something that, you know, I wanna be able to swap samples with people at some point. Um, I've got another uh, show that I'm thinking of and I'm call um, Sample Sunday, where I just take one of your samples, we read the reviews, see what we can find. But uh, yeah, please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you'd want out of a channel. Um, I'm new to this. I know I probably say um too much, but yeah, getting better at it. Thanks.